Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you the process of building a Debian virtual machine within VirtualBox on Windows. And this is a great fit for any of you out there that need a reference installation as you go through the various tutorials on this channel. If you need a reference installation of Linux, then this is the video for you. Now, before we continue, though, I just want to mention that this particular video is actually an excerpt from one of my courses specifically my Linux Essentials course on Udemy. This course will teach you everything you need to know to learn Linux, and it'll also help you pass that exam. And by becoming Linux Essentials certified, you'll become an even stronger candidate in the workforce. And with over 200,000 certification holders, LPI is the first and largest vendor-neutral Linux and open-source certification body. Any certification through LPI is a credential that will definitely be an asset to your career. And my brand new course is a perfect tool to help get you there. With my Linux Essentials course, you'll enjoy over 23 lessons that will teach you valuable Linux skills. Each video will keep you engaged while breaking down each and every topic into easy to understand concepts that will make even the most challenging topics seem simple. In addition, you'll be able to follow along with hands-on examples that will have you working directly with Linux commands and technologies. Even if you are not planning on becoming certified, the Linux Essentials course from Learn Linux TV is a great way to get into Linux in general. So even hobbyists will benefit from this course as well. So check out the course, I would really appreciate it. Becoming certified is a fantastic journey and you will not regret it. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it's time to check out the process of setting up this VM. So let's get started. Anyway, what I'll do is open up a web browser. It doesn't matter which one. And what we're going to do is navigate to virtualbox.org. And once you do, you should find a web page like this one. And what we'll do is go to Downloads right here. And here, what we're going to do is download VirtualBox. You could download it for Windows. You could download it for Mac OS. And also for Linux if you're already running a version of Linux. But what I'm going to do is show you how to do this on Windows. So I'll click on this link right here. And that's downloading the VirtualBox installer, as you can see here. And then next, what we'll need to do is download Debian. And for that, we'll go to Debian.org. Once there, we're going to scroll down a bit here. And then what we're going to do is click on Download. And as you can see, an ISO image for Debian is currently downloading. And now we should have everything that we need to get started. So I can minimize the browser now because we shouldn't need that anymore. We can open up our file manager. I right clicked on it if you're curious, and then we could click on download. So go into your downloads directory basically. And what you wanna do is first install VirtualBox. So we'll double click on that. And then what we'll do is go through the installer. Click next, and then yes, yes again, and then install. And now, as you can see, we get a VirtualBox icon right here, and we have an option to start VirtualBox immediately by checking this checkbox here, so we'll click finish. And here we have VirtualBox. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it can show up better in the video. And then to create a new virtual machine, we'll click New right here. And what I'll do is name mine Debian. I'll leave the defaults for the folder here. For the ISO image, what we'll do is drop this down. We'll click Other. We'll go to our Downloads directory. And what we'll do is find the Debian ISO image right here that we downloaded earlier. So we'll click Open. And then we'll click Next. And then for the username, what we'll do is type in whatever we want our username to be on the Debian installation itself. So when you go to log into your Debian system, this is the username that you'll type in. And it could be anything you want. And then you'll create a password for that particular user.
and then type it again. And I also recommend that you check this guest editions box right here, which I've done. And then we can click next. For memory, I think two gigabytes is probably okay. If your system can support that, that is. But if you can go higher, then I recommend it. Now, we will be installing desktop environments at some point during this course. So if you can spare four gigabytes of memory, then that would be a comfortable minimum to go along with. 2048 is more like the bare minimum. 4096 megabytes, four gigabytes or so, is going to be the more comfortable minimum. But for me, I think four gigabytes is probably fine. And I think we should have at least a few CPUs here. We want to have some multiprocessing, but I'm going to choose four. Four is a comfortable number if you can spare it, if you have that number of cores or CPUs, but two is fine too. That's how I'm going to set up mine. I'll click next. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. And for the virtual hard disk, it depends on how much space you have available. What you can do is go to Explorer here and then scroll down and find your C drive, right click, and then properties. It'll tell you how much space you have free. I have quite a bit free here. I have 388 gigabytes free. So there really shouldn't be any restriction here on my end. What I'm going to do is just change this to 80, which is probably overkill. You can leave it at 20 or 30 and you'll probably be fine. I think 30 is probably a comfortable medium for this. Pre-allocate full size. I don't recommend that you check this box here. You could check the verbiage and the popover if you're curious what that does, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And we'll click next. Here we get a summary of all the selections that we've made. So just go ahead and review everything here. And when you're ready, click finish. Now we have a Debian virtual machine. It's already showing that it's powering it up. I'll make this a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on. And as you can see, Debian is installing inside my VirtualBox virtual machine. How cool is that? At this point, the rest of the installation should just go through automatically. All we should have to do at this point is just wait for it to finish. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to speed this up in post-processing and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now it's rebooting. And if this is the first time that you've ever seen Linux boot, well, here you go. And here you can log into the system. So you could click on your username or you could press space on your keyboard. And then we'll type in our password. And now we've successfully logged in. So what you could do is just click into the window here to go to the desktop. You can go through the welcome screen here. Just click next through each of these. It's just asking some generic questions. Feel free to change any of these if you'd like to. Location services shouldn't really be relevant for our particular use case here. If you do need it, you can enable it in settings if that does happen, but I highly doubt it. What this does is it enables GPS navigation in applications like No Maps, for example. And that's not an application we're going to look that deeply into, so it's not all that important. Anyway, I click Next. And then there's also an ability to connect online accounts with your Linux desktop as well. We'll skip this as well, we shouldn't need that. And then we'll click this button right here to start using Debian. At this point, we have a Debian desktop that we can use. And we can launch applications by clicking on Activities, 
And then this little square icon right here will show all applications that are installed. And the resolution is making this a little hard to see, but there's a terminal icon right here. And I'm sure it's probably going to look better for you. But anyway, if you click on this application here, it's going to open a Linux terminal. And this Linux terminal here can be used for the command line section when we get to that later in this particular course. So if you wanted to know how to open a terminal and where it is you'll perform those commands, well, here you go. So now you have your very own installation of Debian within VirtualBox, and I hope you enjoy it. And again, this has been an excerpt from one of my course videos from my Linux Essentials course. So please check that course out. You won't regret it. It'll help you pass Linux Essentials and get certified. Anyway, with all of that said, it's time to get into the next video that I'm working on for you guys. So I hope you'll subscribe if you want to be the first to see that. But in the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.